Where do east and west meet? Where do north and south touch? What happens when you walk through a threshold, pass through a door, a gate, cast a circle? All of these are liminal spaces. They're spaces in between. Some of them are great mystery lands because they, there is no place where north and south technically touch or maybe everywhere north and south. Is it everywhere? Is it nowhere? And that's the haunting mystery that is a liminal space. It's a both and, a neither, or all at the same time. Let's talk about these borderlands, these liminal spaces today, as we walk together down creation's paths. Hello, everybody. My name is Charling. I am a Christopagan Druid and priest of Bridget. Hello, everyone. I am Brian. I'm a partaker of the hypnagogic wine. Speaking of liminal spaces, that's yes. one of my favorite ones. That moment, that space when you are not awake and you are not asleep. That you're somewhere in between. Somewhere in between. I like trying to wedge myself in that space sometimes and just partake of it. We started calling it drinking of the hypnagogic wine. We did. It's a space that we enter in a lot during meditation. If you do journey work, you're familiar with those gateways, those crossing over places, those liminal spaces in between. We see them at the various points where we celebrate the sun. We celebrate them four times a month in the moon cycle. A lot of interesting stuff that happens in these in-between places. But before we get into all that, don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, whatever the terminology is on whatever platform you're currently listening to us on. It really does help us out a lot. Plus, we do five original Christopagan and Druid episodes every week. Monday through Friday, and you don't want to miss a single one because we've got a lot of interesting topics lined up for you. All right, let's get into it. So a liminal space. Liminal spaces are really easy to understand just as a definition place. Beyond that, things get <laughs> crazy. A liminal space is an in-between. The door to your house is a liminal space. It is a border threshold that you could cross between inside and outside. It is neither inside nor outside, but it is kind of both inside and outside. For those true mischief makers out there, if you really want to unsettle somebody in a non untrooped manner, hang out in that liminal space and watch how quickly someone will yell at you to get out of it. Like in the doorway is one of those great thresholds you can do that in. You ever notice you see somebody hanging out in a doorway and the urge is to shout at them and order them to either enter or exit. There's like this strong urge to not have them hang out in that liminal space because it's one of my great proofs of the existence of that space because people are like, no, you're either in or you're out. You can't be both. And the answer is yes. Yeah, and it yeah. freaks people out when you hang out there. <laughs> Fun mischief exercise that I play sometimes it's one of the reasons why we have the ability to completely forget everything when you walk through a door oh quick side note on that i'm gonna take us down a little tangent for a minute be careful don't ever name your doorway ye old door of forgetting because you will empower the forgetfulness that can happen just naturally in a liminal space and you have then technically done enchanting work yeah, yeah. Okay. ahead of us i'm really getting ahead of us ahead of things now but you have enchanted that space and you're setting yourselves up for problems it will affect everyone going through it i'm just speaking from experience we made that mistake with the doorway the little spaces are powerful powerful regions they work on us because they make us get past the categories that we're used to they are literally at the border twilight is a very common Borderland, a very common liminal space that we enter twice daily, whether we're awake or not, when they happen. Because you have the dawn and the dusk. These are liminal times. It's not quite night, and it's not quite day. Dawn is one of my favorite times in the world. Now, a lot of people talk about sunsets, and sunsets are pretty. But as somebody who's a bit of a night owl, one of my favorite things to do is to be out there right as the sun's coming out. I've talked before about my love of the, doing the vigil on the summer solstice, where you sit out all night waiting for the first rays of the sun to, to come in to welcome the sun as it's just 
coming up and we're just getting into that period of the year. There's something just magical. The sky is dark, but you can see the light on the horizon. The birds start anticipating the arrival of day and the insects start to quiet down and the birds start to sing. This transition that is just taking over all of nature is this magical moment as we're moving from the night into the day. One of my favorite things to witness, to be a part of, I, I really love watching the sunrise. But why are liminal spaces important? Why, why do they matter to us? Because they're where magic is the longest. I know that sounds like a big claim, but let me break that down. Magic is the participation with and alteration of subtle energies moving through the world. I'm energy, you're energy, the microphone that we're talking into is energy. The podcast is being stored as digital energy and sent out into the world. Everything is energy, everything. Now we're playing with that energy and magic. In a liminal space, things are not just one thing. Like we said, when you're at a threshold, you're neither in nor out, but you're both in and out. You're, you're neither in both at the same time. You're in this in-between place. Dawn is neither night nor day. Sunset is neither night nor day. You're in these places of in-between. And it's in the in-between as one thing is becoming another. Everything is in flux. We can get in there and play and really do the workings that we want to do. Now, that doesn't mean you have to schedule all of your magics for dawn or dusk. That's not how this works. There are a lot of liminal spaces. There's a lot of magic that's done at doorsteps. Our protection charms are on the doors because that door in and of itself, it's a permanent liminal space. When you're cleaning your house, you sweep out, you blow the cinnamon out the front door towards the south to call prosperity in. You're in that liminal space. You're in that in-between space because you're trying to take advantage of that unset, unsettled energy of the in-between. This is why a lot of magic takes place on the inside of us in the most amazing liminal space that we have access to, and that's our imagination and our journey, both of which are vibrant liminal spaces. Your imagination is both everything you can imagine and nothing at the same time. Let me shift your focus for a minute on that and give you a fun example to help clarify the understanding of liminal spaces. We're going we're to share some wisdom from a toddler. The toddler wants a thing and the parent has said no. And the toddler is now going to evoke their magic and the use of liminal spaces to shift the parent into saying yes. So the toddler draws a breath and holds it. This is pausing their entire being in a liminal space between inhaling and exhaling. And they are going to pause themselves in this liminal space until the parent yields, thus giving them the toy or treat or whatever thing that they wanted. And this is pulling on that magic in that liminal space. It's, it's kind of a silly example, and a, kind of a, a funny example. And for those parents out there, you realize, oh yeah, sometimes it worked so well and sometimes it didn't. And the, the reason why it works so well and the darker aspects of that is because you're at a point of existing and not existing liminal space. And the, the child is challenging your psyche, putting forward that, qu that question that they said earlier, if you truly love me, you'd give me this thing. If you truly love them, if you truly wanted their existence, you would yield that over to them. It, it's one of the first and magic that we naturally, natively do. Natively, naturally use, yes. yeah. It's manipulative. It's oh, yeah. It's, and some magic is manipulative, and we need to be careful about that. Yeah, but it is an interesting example to reflect back upon of that liminal space. It's why a lot of that breath work, the liminal space between that inhaling and exhaling, is it's where the magic Where the magic is, really, power. This, when we're doing any of our work, we need to raise energy. Now, that can come from a lot of sources. You can give them your own energy. You can make an offering to generate the energy. You can sometimes have a spirit or a member of the other crowd that is willing to donate a little bit of their energy to the cause. Make sure that you've read the fine print if you're with dealing with the other folk. And sometimes there are clauses. So make sure that you have all of the fine details worked out there. But one of the easiest ways to do this 
is to draw that liminal space. Like you're saying, it's why a lot of incantation, a lot of spell work has breathing in it. You're either breathing faster or you're breathing slower, or you're doing something with your breath to generate that energy for the work that you're doing. And I do have to say, be very careful with breath work. If you do not know how to properly hold your breath, you can damage your lungs. Just be mindful of that. You don't want to tighten your lungs when you hold the breath in. Open throat, open throat, open throat. <laughs> there are lots of resources you can get to to read in on that, but be very, very careful, especially if you're doing a lot of breath work that requires you to hold your breath for a period of time. You can do violence to yourself because you can constrict your lungs and your throat too much. Be careful there. In doing all of these things, you are generating that space. I very often use water in my rituals because water is a liminal space. It has this mirror surface on it. I also like using mirrors for the same reason. It has this mirrored surface on it where the outside and the inside are, you can see the outside reflected in the surface. You can see what's underneath through it. There's this in, in between place, that very surface of the water that is both and and neither nor because it's not the room that's being reflected into it or the candlelight or whatever. And it's not whatever's in the bottom, but you can see it reflected in that space, that thin layer on the top. There are a lot of ways to access the liminal spaces. They are a wonderful way of generating power. They're an easy way to generate power when you're trying to do magical work because they just are. In some ways, the weird way to say it, but I like science fiction, they're kind of the zero point energy module of actual real world magic. Putting in a doorway, putting in a threshold, drawing a circle, like I said, using water, using these special times, whether it's the phases of the moon, the sun, or the time of day, the dusk or the dawn. These are powerful places. This is why candle and fire work is so much there because the flame itself is the liminal space between the physical object and all of the atoms that have then be, been released because the fire is liminal illusion. Yeah. It, it, it is the plasmatic heat. It's not the wax. It's not the wick. It's not. The air, really, it is, it is an in-between place. And it's one of the reasons why candles and various other flames are used a lot in the practice and in the art. Learning to find those liminal spaces that work well for you will really change your craft and how you're actually practicing. But also, learning to be comfortable in liminal spaces will tell you a lot about yourself. I have met people that find dusk, dawn, that find those twilight hours, unnerving that's a point for self-reflection there if you find those times they make your skin crawl they don't feel quite right and you don't like doors i've known people that will just kind of hop through a door they don't want to spend any time at all in that in-between place why that says something about your own discomfort with those places of spiritual darkness which we've been talking about a lot in the last couple of episodes those places of unknowing where things are neither one thing or the other. That's a good sign that this is something that you need to do some work on and ask yourself, well, what is it about that? And I'm being very specific about those liminal spaces because there are a lot of reasons to have issues with water or fire, for example, that have nothing to do with the liminality of either of those things. You start finding this, especially with thresholds. If you, you try to stand in the doorway, like go to your bedroom door and just try to stand in the doorway. How do you feel when you're there? Because this will help you discern things that you might need to work on. Just really dig into it. If you feel uncomfortable just standing in the doorway, why? Why is the most powerful tool that you have in your belt if you are practicing magic or mysticism for that matter? Why? Why do I feel uncomfortable standing here? It's not doing anything to me. Why, why is it uncomfortable? Why is it unnerving to me? Ask yourself the questions, dig into it, find out what the answers are. Then you will learn a lot about yourself and help yourself to move past whatever those issues are. May not be an easy road, but it is a road that you may need to walk. It is very revealing because a lot of this work really is about us learning to be comfortable with ourselves. This is, I think, the underrated part of magic when we have this very spiritual material community that has developed around magic where it's like, here, let me teach you how to cast a money spell or how to set up a wealth altar or 
how to get that person that you like to fall in love with you. Like all that kind of magic has always been with us and will always be with us. But the vast majority of our magical practice is actually doing the hard work of learning to be comfortable with ourselves and who we are and really taking on the power that that provides for us because that is a very powerful thing. And so start asking yourself those questions, putting yourself in those spaces because these are safe spaces to enter. Standing in your bedroom door or your bathroom door and maybe try this in several different doorways to be quite honest because you may have a different reaction in the bathroom than you do in a bedroom. And that'll illuminate something about those spaces. If you have a special room that you do your magic in, stand in the doorway there. How do you feel? What's going on? Stand at the door to your house. How do you feel? You really will start discovering aspects of yourself that you are not normally cognizant of. Because that's what happens in liminal spaces. Because everything has this both and, either or, neither, neither quality to it. Everything gets jumbled up. And you start seeing... In some ways, clearer than you did before, and in some ways, not so much. Because the other thing that happens in the middle spaces is the things that we believe are certain and set. Oh, they don't pass that threshold very well, do they? They start showing their component parts. They start showing how they, like everything else, is a hodgepodge of other things that we thought was a unit of one. is actually a one from many. And you'll have that experience a lot, the deeper you get into the practice. So start playing around with these ideas. I think a really good way to do this is scrying, but I am biased. I love scrying. Scrying can be done very simply with setting up a bowl of water and a candle or a light, preferably a light that flickers. So if you get an artificial candle, make sure it's one of the flickery ones that kind of mimics firelight because you want something that's going to cast patterns into the water and look and see what you see in that liminal space in that threshold on the surface because yes we can use scrying for a lot of things but we can also use scrying to really learn about ourselves i do this often with my coffee or tea i will notice something in the surface of the liquid and be able to tell very quickly something about what's going on inside my own mind because it's not actually in the surface it's how all of the cacophony of stuff going on in my brain interpreted that random light and shadow to tell me something else that really is a lot of what you're getting in these spaces in these in-between spaces because when something is not one thing or another it's kind of free to maybe be anything and once you can unlock that once you can understand how that works then learning to do these transmutations and these changes that we all want and we are all let's be honest doing the craft to do well all of a sudden you start realizing oh that's what that is that's how i do that that's how this breaks down and becomes that and we have to enter these uncomfortable middle grounds to get there for those out there that are more like me that have an affinity for liminal spaces and like to run around in them doing so will help you learn the importance of grounding. Basically, it's the flip side of all of it. Because like in everything, there is an extreme. And so it's it's easy for me to slip off into a liminal space and to run off and be gone for some unknown period of time. I have to remember I'm going to keep myself grounded or tethered or have that that return, that structure, because it, it's a both end. You need to be both end. So you need to be able to go in and out and not get lost. To get back to the threshold practice that we were talking about, you love just standing in doorways. I love, I love just being in doors. I have literally found liminal spaces in houses where I was neither in the room nor not in a room. Because some houses actually have those liminal spaces in between where I've slipped between the walls of a house if I could and I have at times and like running around in there. I just love being in that space and running off into it. But I have to remember that for me, it was in informative and educational to learn that, yes, I need to be grounded. I need to ground myself in places and have those return places set up so that I can come back and running off. Because it's easy to forget to come back. It's easy to forget to come back. What are your relationships with liminal spaces? Do you have any favorites? Like I said, my, mine is that bowl of water. I love scrying. I really, really, really do. And I use 
I, I love looking at the surface of a lake, pond, a river, a bowl of water, a bowl of soup, a cup of tea, what, what, what have you. I find myself just gazing into that surface to see what I can see. Have you thought about liminal spaces before? Is this a new term for you? I feel like it is for some people. Let it, let us know down in the comments. If you're listening to us on YouTube or Spotify, you can leave a comment right there. If you're listening to us anywhere else, even if it says you can leave a comment, you can leave a comment there because engagement is magic, but they don't let us know. So take that comment and head over to creationspaths.com. Click on chat and you can leave a comment there. And if you see it, respond to you and continue the conversation there. While you're there, if you happen to have a few dollars, you can pass our way. Don't, you can think about signing up and becoming a member. You can also support us on Patreon and Kofi. I am CD Dorset on both. That money really does help us out. It helps us to keep food on the table, a roof over our head, and the lights on. But if you don't have any money, don't worry about it. Just share what we're doing with other people. That helps us in a lot of ways too. I love seeing the growth that we've been having and the engagement that we've been getting in the community. It really does warm my heart a lot. And as we are entering this time, the two gods that we have been talking about a lot this season are liminal deities. So we ask for the grace and the guidance of the queen of the wind and the hunter to take us through all of those in between places and to find the paths and all of the treasures that we might find there so that we may be stronger in ourselves, stronger in our work and more effective in the craft. Amen. Amen. Amen.